waiting for the pleasure boat to go through the lock so that we can go in behind moored up against a brand new what looks like brand new anyway never been used canella river trust boat alongside that high wall a bit difficult getting in and out with the dogs and it's right by a park so we're a bit uh, iffy about mooring there so we're moving past the wonderful castle of Newark there's a the little gap that we found it's just perfect Who would be? No, that's amazing. Been hot today. It's been hot, but this is so relaxing and so lovely. just got to Newark on Trent town centre just as they're packing up the market so unfortunately the uh, fruit store wasn't fully laden but we got a load of stuff Fran it's probably just as well they weren't fully laden isn't it not... <laughs> but um, £8.50 that's yeah, good isn't it yes and now a plastic bag inside plastic box for the grapes but I'll forgive uh, them that yeah. right are we going to have a beer I think so have me when they swim in a river but they're only literally just going off the side and it's fine and um, Jess is loving it but uh, we've now got an hour of flouncing around the boat of wet dogs <laughs> but at least they're cool The 17th century stone arch bridge is a listed monument so therefore cannot be altered to accommodate larger vessels and the first known castle on this site dates back to 1129 the present building commenced in 1173 and after many sieges and battles during the civil war 
the Roundheads eventually dismantled the castle in 1646. Well, we are in the lovely town of Newark. What a surprise. And it's making us feel very welcome. It is. There's a book festival on. This is the last day of the book festival. And uh, we just met Claire, who's one of the organisers of the festival. And uh, who's uh, given us a glass of champagne. So thanks, Claire. And she's a writer as well. So she writes under the name of... C.L. Peach. C.L. Peach, yeah. So, so we're going to go and have a look. She's, she's got, got some books. books down there for sale. Yeah, so we're going to have a look. But what a fab town, it's beautiful, Fran. It's, we've heard mixed reviews as you always do when you're going somewhere. Some people like it, so many people have said there's not much here. The market dates back to, I think, well, I'm not even going to say a date because I don't know, it's old. But it was apparently the first market in the country to be granted a market on a Wednesday. And it's really old. And all the permanent market stores, there's a market every day of the week in a different form here. Um, we just missed the fruit and veg market yesterday, we got here a bit late, but today it's taken over by books and it's wonderful isn't it? It is, so we've got a good view here, up here from the balcony of the uh, town hall yes. and we're going to have our glass of shampoo <laughs> and uh, have a wander around. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Unfortunately, it being Sunday, the church is closed. Well, we've sought out a little bit of shade, so I'm sorry if we're in the dark. It's a scorcher of a day, but what a fabulous town. There's so much to see and do. The buildings are just amazing. There's a lot of original architecture here, isn't there? And yeah. uh, it's got a huge Civil War history that we're not even going to begin to go into. <laughs> no. um, come and have a look yourself. <laughs> but it is beautiful and uh, we're going to pop off and uh, find a cool drink now, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, we can't be out too, to eat. too long because we've left the dogs on the boat having had a morning swim in the cool river. But we don't want to leave them too long. It's too hot for them out. But yeah, a cool drink for us. So for boaters, Newark's got a bit of a dubious reputation because the, the wall at the moorings is so high and right by a park. It's in the past, boaters like Jarno, for instance, have had kids banging on the roof and running up and down the roof of the boat. So fortunately, we managed to get uh, a nice little morning on the pontoons further downstream. But uh, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Really nice place to be, lots to do and see. And uh, fortunately, there's some hostelries we can go and cool down in. We do seem to be lucky with our mooring spots, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we were jammy yeah. yesterday. Yeah. We, we take a little bit, not take a chance because we don't, but we are not frightened to moor up where other people have said don't. Mm. Um, we make our own decisions and uh, this mooring spot we've got is perfect. We've even got our own tap, yeah, haven't we? Yeah, right on the, yeah. on the boat. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, let's move on and uh, we'll see you soon. I'm trying. <laughs> What's the recipe today, friend? <laughs> I'm making scrambled eggless eggs. Um, we've always struggled with tofu. We've tried lots of tofu recipes and we're at the point of saying no more tofu because we didn't like it. And then I discovered this recipe for tofu eggs. Now when you're traveling around and you haven't got always access to good quality fresh food and we only eat eggs when we know where they've come from, we struggle a little bit. But you can always keep, this isn't an advert for tofu, but you can always keep tofu in the cupboard. I'm using this tofu, 
we've used other kinds. This is firm tofu, not silken, um, and it's quite dry. It's such an easy recipe and so good. So basically I've heated a little bit of olive oil in the pan and I'm just going to crumble this tofu. I've drained a little bit of liquid that came with it off and I'm going to just crum crumble this. I'm making a mess, I always do, mm. but that's okay. Actually it's quite a lot. I'm only going to use half a block I think because I think that's enough for us to. And just basically crumble it up with the fork, up with your fingers and cook it for a couple of minutes just to let it dry off a little bit. Nice haircut, Ben. I went to Shea Richard this morning. <laughs> well, he came to me actually, cuts it in my own boat, and my haircut on the own boat, who knew? By my husband. Not bad, is it? Just like... <laughs> it's a very pink as well today, <laughs> Okay, so a couple of minutes later, this has begun just to dry off a little bit. And at this point, I'm going to add, for half a block of tofu, I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric, thereabouts. We use, you can use garlic salt, but I've got onion salt, so about a quarter of a teaspoon of onion salt. If you haven't got that, I would guess just ordinary salt will do. And this is when it starts taking on the lovely yellow colour of your scrambled eggs. Just keep frying it and mixing it around. It's essential, isn't it, that you don't put too much turmeric in because that could just ruin it, can't it? It's, it? Turmeric is a really strong flavour. I quite like it. Rich is not so keen. So that quarter of a teaspoon, as you can see, that's gone quite yellow. And that will be fine without it being too overpowering. That's it. And then we're going to have two tablespoons, probably a little bit too much, of nooch. And nooch, nutritional yeast, um, you can get in health food shops. And it just, it's, it can be used to give things a bit of a cheesy flavour. So that's not tablespoons, that's two dessert spoons, that's enough for this amount. You can use your own discretion for taste when you're making any of my recipes. But that starts to give it Already it's smelling a little bit eggy, isn't it? Yeah, and the nutritional yeast is full of vitamins B12, oh, isn't it? It's, I think it's B12, yeah, it's really good for you. Um, and now you can see that's not looking unlike scrambled egg. It just gets a little bit dry and needs a little bit of binding. Um, and this is our own oat milk that we are now making, and you can find the recipe on the website or in our last video. And just enough milk to moisten this. And there you go. That's done. It's really good for you. And if we were having this for lunch, I'd probably put now some chives in it. You can put chopped peppers or anything you like in it. But when we're having it for breakfast on toast, we just have it just as it is and it is really it isn't exactly the same as scrambled egg but it's really tasty it's a really good substitute isn't it Rich? Oh, I love it to bits yeah it's fantastic. Yeah. We gave it to some family members rest recently who stayed for breakfast and they really enjoyed it they'd never had it before um, and we had that and mushroom tomatoes and a big cooked breakfast with no egg or no bacon in it so yeah. So what are we going to have it with? We're having it on toast for lunch, or maybe I'm going to let it go. No, we're having egg salad tonight, I think, aren't we? We are. So we're going to let it go cold. We've got lots of salad stuff I've been picking off of the roof. So we're going to just sprinkle it onto a salad tonight. That's dinner.
a scorcher. It's uh, about 30 degrees centigrade apparently. Uh, that's about 90, 92 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it's about 120 actually. At least. <laughs> it's hot and sticky. Nice breeze coming across now though. It's, so, about, it's hot to touch isn't it? it? Is, Everything's yeah. hot. So we've uh, left Newark on Trent and we've just gone through a lock <laughs> that we had to operate ourselves. How very dare they. It seems like the luckiest have Mondays off along here because I think <laughs> the last time I'd automated locks was on Monday. They have a day off. That's okay. It's fine. So now we're heading to Cromwell Lock which is about four miles or something from where we started this morning and uh, that will then take us tomorrow onto the tidal trent. Yeah, so there's moorings, we're told, moorings at Cromwell Lock and if there's not pontoon moorings we'll have to moor up against a wall for a night but that's okay, just for one night. That's fine. And um, yeah, we're booked to go through tomorrow. Early doors, about eight o'clock-ish. <laughs> so that'll be fun. That's the bow thrusters switching off. Even that sounds like it's hot and vivid, <laughs> Sad, it's, doesn't it? It's losing the will to live. The water looks so enticing, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it really does. But there is a, quite a flow, and I think down at the lock it's going to be quite a flow, so it's probably not going to be a good place to swim. But it's so tempting. But apparently the, the river levels are the lowest they've been for two years. So when we get to the lock later, we'll go and have a chat with the lock keeper. We can buy a chart, which... Uh, shows you your routes, avoiding sunken islands and sandbanks etc. So it looks like tomorrow will be a fun three or four hours getting through to Torxy Lock which will then take us on the Foss Dyke Canal. And next weekend they're predicting a well, I don't know what the proper name is for it, but a bore where the water and the tides meet and you get a big wave come along the river. Um, not as far as here, but I think it has done in the past. But unfortunately, or fortunately... Fortunately, <laughs> we won't be on the river. It would be a good thing to see, though, wouldn't it, if it's going to happen. We might try and get there and film it if it is. But um, yeah. we're going to be safe off on the... Um, on the other na Fosdyke navigation. Fosdyke navigation, which is the oldest navigation in the country, man made that is, apparently. Yeah. Built by the Romans. What did the Romans ever do for us? Built canals, apparently. Built canals, yeah. So that's us, that's today, and uh, we'll see you later. i put my hat back on there. <laughs> Can't see me now.